penal uh, Sunday in the church year, and next week begins the, the new church year with the season of Advent, the first Sunday. There are a number of printed announcements in the bulletin itself. I trust that you'll note them. Are there any particular items that any of you would want to bring to each other's attention today? Did the turkey survive? (laughs) Careful how you answer that. (laughs) Okay. Then we will continue with our order for confession and forgiveness. And in this, we return to the wonderful grace of God shared with us in holy baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in whose image we are made who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children. And Jesus, our beloved, opens the door for us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. Our gathering hymn, Jesus Shall Reign Where'er the Sun, number 434.
and earth repeat the loud Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God of power and might, your Son shows us the way of service, and in him we inherit the riches of your grace. Give us the wisdom to know what is right and the strength to serve the world you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated, and I invite the choir to share their anthem at this time.
morning. Good morning. Our first reading this morning is found in the Old Testament book of Ezekiel, chapter 34, verses 11 through 16 and 20 through 24. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the watercourses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up, set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them, and he shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. The psalm is from chapter 95, verses 1 through 7a, and we'll read it responsibly. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let's come before God's presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to the Lord with psalms. For you, Lord, are a great God and a great ruler above all gods. In your hand are the caverns of the earth, the heights of the hills are also yours. The sea is yours, for you made it, and your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For the Lord is our God, and we are the people of God's pasture and the sheep of God's hand. The second reading is found in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remembered you in my prayers. I pray that the Lord, or that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that, with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power? God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Here ends the reading. Hallelujah, Lord and Savior. Oh, are you like fire within be gone till our hearts are stirred Hallelujah, Lord we sing for the good news that you the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew the 25th chapter glory to you O Lord as we hear the gospel reading this morning, I would remind you that we are near the end of Jesus' life 
on earth as, he, as we know it, so to speak. The next chapter begins with the plot to betray Jesus and goes on with the events of the last few days. Earlier, chapter 21, Jesus had ridden into Jerusalem on the donkey. Palm Sunday, we hear that story. And in between, there was teaching in, in the temple. And at the beginning of chapter 24, Jesus had left the temple. And the disciples were looking at all the beautiful rocks and, and stones. And he had said, all of this will fall down. And then he began teaching them because they said, well, when will this happen? And he doesn't answer the when. He just says, beware of false messiahs. And he says, when the Son of Man comes... The angels will gather the faithful from all the four corners of the earth. And chapter 25 began with the parable you heard a couple weeks ago of the ten maidens, the ten bridesmaids. And last week you heard the parable of, of the, the three people who received talents um, to invest or do something with. And today we hear the last of the parables in that chapter. When the Son of Man comes in, in all his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne in glory. And as all the nations will, will be gathered before him, he will begin to separate people uh, one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the, the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. And he will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I, I was thirsty, and, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I, I was Naked, and you gave me clothing. I, I, was a, I was sick, and you took care of me. I, I was in prison, and you visited me. And the righteous will say to him, Lord, when was it that, that we saw you hungry and, and gave you food or, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? When was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? When was it? that we saw you sick or in prison and, and visited you. And he will say to them, Truly I tell you, when you did it to the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. And then he will say to those at his left, that depart from me, you accursed, into the, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and, and all his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. I was... Naked, and you gave me no clothing. I was sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. And they will say to him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or, or a stranger and naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? And he will say to them, Truly I say to you, when you did not do it to the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will enter into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Adults may be seated. I invite children to join me for a children's message.
Come right on up here. This is great. So, oh, one more. Yes, one more. Yeah. Get right up here. That's great. Give me five. No? Okay. Yeah, give me five. All right. What? He's one. That's great. Okay. You can't be two until you get there, right? Yeah. So, what we, we had a, a Big feast on Thursday where I was. Did you eat plenty on Thursday? Yeah. What day was that? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving that's right. And uh, there's a time when we, this part of the year when we often think about things that we might be thankful for. What are some things that you're thankful for? Are you? Yeah. Pardon? Water. Water. Sure. Without it, we'd die of thirst. Yes. What else are you thankful for? Lane. Lane? Yes. All right. That's uh, what person? Is this Lane right here? All right. You're thankful for your little brother. All right. Yes. (laughs) Thankful for food? Me too. Other things we might be thankful for? Help us out. Family? What else? Getting up in the morning? Yep, I'm thankful to get up every morning. It happens. Thankful for our congregation, the church. Somebody's not so happy. Okay. Might be thankful for the beautiful snow and driving safely. All of you got here safely. I got here safely. Thankful for all the gifts that God gives us. Thankful for the beauty of all creation. Thankful for our families and friends. Lots of things to be thankful for. And with, just with people, if somebody gives you something or does something for you, what are some ways that you might express being thankful? Yeah. You might give them some candy. You might give them a gift. Sure. Some other ways you might express being thankful. You ever give somebody a hug? Do you ever say... Yeah, okay, you ever, yeah, do you ever say that you're, I lost my train of thought, <laughs> yeah. you ever say thank you, yeah, do you ever give, yeah, give somebody a hug, say thank you, maybe a way to, to say thank you to somebody is to do something for them, right, maybe if your mom did something for you, you might help with the dishes, or you might, somebody stealing the show, Some, someone, you might do lawn work. It's a little late to rake the leaves, but you might help family with lawn work just to say thank you to them. Or sometimes, when we're thankful, we might do something for somebody else altogether. Yeah, we might help a neighbor shovel their walk. We might help a neighbor rake their leaves just to, we call that paying it forward. You ever heard that? Pay it forward? You haven't heard of that. Well, now you have. When you do something for somebody else just because you're thankful that somebody did something for you, we call it pay it forward. So maybe your parents do something nice and you do something for a friend. That's pay it forward. Yeah, so saying thank you. Have you ever written a card to say thank you to somebody? Like maybe your grandparents give you something and you write a card to say thank you? Okay. I, I, I don't think you can read my notes. Um, not sure you can even see him up there, but yeah, he's having a, we're all having fun. It's fine. So there are lots of ways to say thank you, right? And in the gospel reading, we heard Jesus talking about people that were hungry or thirsty or a stranger or not having clothes or sick or in prison, and he suggested doing things for them. That's kind of like if we're thankful to God for what God gives us, all the wonderful things that God gives us, we might Pay it forward and help other people. Yeah, I'm going to talk about that more in the regular part of the sermon. But you got to start it, right? Let's pray. God, thank you. Yes, thank you with my mouth. May I also thank you with my living so that my thanksgiving might become thanks living, as someone put it. May that be true for each of us with hugs and chores and helping neighbors. 
in Jesus' name. You can go be seated and we'll continue. I've been upstaged by one-year-olds before. <laughs> Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Sheep or goats, which are you? Well... I suppose you might have been a little uncomfortable when I, in sharing the gospel, the folks over here, they all got to be sheep and the folks over here all got to be goats. <laughs> Make you a little bit uncomfortable? Well, that was for the impact of the gospel. Uh, I am not the son of man. I am not the king. I am not Christ. But we hear the words of Jesus. And if you're a little uncomfortable thinking about sheep or goats, for now, set that aside. Because hearing the rest of the scripture, the, the intent is for us to say, yes, we have already been called sheep by God. That was in the psalm. In, in the first reading, it was separating sheep among sheep and gathering in the sheep that had been scattered. At the end of the psalm, it was, He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture. We are the sheep of His hand, an affirmation. And beyond the scripture itself, in baptism, God said, I have called you by name, and you are mine. So it's not, am I or am I not one of God's own? Kind of like picking the petals off a flower, He loves me, He loves me not. No, it's not that. So set aside Am I a sheep or not? But rather, God has called me. I do belong. We heard it in the words of the gospel text. Come, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. We sometimes lose sight that Jesus was talking to his disciples at that time. Inherit. You see, we do not earn an inheritance, right? Right? We earn wages, yes, but an inheritance, do we earn it? No. But usually someone dies so that we inherit. And in the scripture, who dies that we might inherit the kingdom? You know it is Christ Jesus who died and who is raised that we might inherit the kingdom prepared for us from the foundation of the world. And yet we still hear the text speak of feeding the hungry and giving drink to the thirsty. We, we hear the text speaking of, of welcoming the stranger and giving clothing to the naked, of, of caring for the sick and visiting those in prison. These are not to earn the kingdom, but rather because the kingdom is our inheritance, because Jesus has claimed us as his own, we are called to live in that way to serve those in need. My way of putting it is this. You are a child of God. Now live like it. You are a sheep of God's pasture. Now live like it. That's a little. Yeah, that works. Or Pastor Ed Marquardt, in a, in a sermon published on the Internet a few years ago, he talked about how much he loved his children, and yet he expected them to do chores around the house. And he would have even ask them, have you done your chores? And today's gospel is kind of like that. God has said, I love you so much. Now do your chores. I love you so much. Have you done your chores? That's kind of how the gospel is today. Martin Luther once put it this way, a Christian does works of kindness as naturally as the sun shines, as naturally as a fruit tree bears fruit, as naturally as three plus four equals seven. And these things are probably already part of your life together as the people of American Lutheran Church and part of your life personally. Perhaps you have contributed to, to pantries in the area or, or made a donation to the ELCA hunger program or you volunteered at a mobile pantry or at, at the... Um, 
Northeast Iowa Food Bank in Waterloo. Or maybe you've given a drink to someone as, as a neighbor. Or maybe you have contributed to the ELCA Walk for Water program. Maybe you have welcomed someone into the neighborhood. Or maybe you have supported Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Services because they welcome people who come here as immigrants. I was so pleased several years ago when all of the refugees came quickly from Afghanistan to know that Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Services was key on the East Coast to get those people to families, to find a place, to find a job. In your congregation's life, you help clothe the naked with, with the women's projects, with things like quilts and layettes and more, or maybe you individually have contributed to, to goodwill or to a clothing closet. Maybe you visited the sick personally or supported a hospital chaplain or military chaplains visiting in prison. Maybe a little more difficult personally, but maybe you have supported ELCA ministries like the Church of the Damascus Road, which is an in-prison congregation at Rockwell City in Fort Dodge. An inspiring example for me, I read about a couple years ago, there's a uh, a pro football player. His name is Jason Brown. He was a center for the St. Louis Rams. Now, they, the Rams were in St. Louis for 20 years. They're now back in L.A. But in the last years that they were in, in, in St. Louis, he turned down a $35 million contract. He turned it down so he could farm in his home state of South Carolina. Sweet potatoes. And the first crop The first crop, the first year, he gave tons and tons of sweet potatoes to pantries in South Carolina. In a news article about that, he said this, When I think about a life of greatness, I think about a life of service. When I think about a life of greatness, I think about a life of service. Would you repeat that after me, line by line? When I think about a life of greatness... When I think about a life of greatness, I think about a life of service. I think about a life of service. One more time. When I think about a life of greatness, when I think about a life of greatness, I think about a life of service. I think about a life of service. There's there's a song that's been on the religious radio for several years by Matthew West. It's called Do Something. The words begin like this. I woke up this morning, saw a world full of trouble. Now I thought... How do we ever go get down so far? And how's it ever going to turn around? So I turned my eyes to heaven. I thought, God, why don't you do something? Well, I just couldn't bear the thought of people living in poverty and children sold into slavery. The thought of disgusted me. So I shook my fist at heaven. And I said, God, why don't you do something? And he said, I did. I created you. If not us, then who, he writes. If not me and you, right now it's time for us to do something. If not now, then when? When will we see an end to all this pain? It's not enough to do something. Or it's not enough to do nothing. It's time for us to do something. In part, I agree with him when he says, you know, God said, I created you. But in part, I disagree, because the the greatest thing God did was sending the Son. The the biggest thing God did was to send the Son to save the world and the people God loved. And through this Jesus, God will set right all that is wrong. And yet, like I said, I agree. God, God did create you and me. Part of your life, part of my life, and our, our calling and our purpose is to do something for the sake of others. Anybody here ever worked in an auto body shop or in a, in a mechanic shop uh, for cars or for tractors? Anybody ever worked in a shop like that? Nobody? I bet you know somebody that has. You might say, God says, I created you and recreated you in Christ. 
as you work in a shop, do something, for I created you. Anyone ever work with livestock, dairy or beef or cattle or chickens or hogs or turkeys? Yeah. God says, I created you and I recreated you in Christ as you raise livestock and, and maybe show them at, at fairs. Do something for the sake of others. Anyone here play sports? Maybe baseball or basketball or football or soccer or volleyball or tiddlywinks. God says, I created you and I recreated you in Christ as you play and practice, as you live on and off the field, as you live on and off the court. Do something for the sake of others. Anyone sing in a shower or in the choir? Anyone clerk in an office or, or check at a store? Anyone cook at home or maybe cook in a, in a business? God says, I created you and I recreated you as you sing or clerk or check or cook, do something for the sake of others. Once in a sermon on this text, Martin Luther wrote, Therefore see to it that you are among those who are kind and merciful here on earth for Christ's sake, or who even suffer for his sake, and then you will joyfully await the last day and need not be afraid of judgment, for he has already selected you and placed you among those who stand at his right hand. It's interesting to me that in the text, both those who did and those who did not feed the hungry and give drink to the thirsty and all those things, both of them say, when? When did we see you? hungry or thirsty or stranger or naked or the last ones <laughs> sick or in prison and to both Jesus says when you did or did not do it to the least of these you did it or did not do it to me as we serve as we pay it forward as we do something as we do our chores Jesus meets us there in the hungry and thirsty the stranger, the naked, the sick, and those in prison. Jesus meets us. That's his promise. But also part of the point is when we serve people, we serve people, period. We will see people, period. Jesus is there by promise even if we do not see him there. It's kind of like the bread and wine in the Holy Communion. We will always see bread and wine in the Holy Communion, but we trust Jesus is there to give us his body and blood because he promises to be there. So also with the hungry and thirsty and all the others, these people will always be people who look like normal, flawed human beings, yet Jesus meets us there. It does not depend on whether someone is Christian or not. It does not depend on whether someone believes or not. It depends on Jesus' words. It depends on Jesus' promise. When you and I do this for the least of them, we do this for Jesus. In Matthew's Gospel, we hear about a God who comes to us and is with us in ordinary things from the beginning of the Gospel to the end of the Gospel. In the first chapter, the angel said to Joseph, this child that Mary has conceived is from the Holy Spirit. And the gospel writer says, yes, this was to fulfill what Isaiah said. A virgin will conceive and bear a son, and you will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. And in chapter 18, Jesus says, when two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Or in this chapter, in the hungry and thirsty and the others, in ordinary people, Jesus is there. And in the next chapter, Jesus will say with bread and wine, this is my body and blood given for you. And at the very end of the gospel, Jesus will say, go and make disciples, baptizing and teaching, because look, I am with you always. It is all promise a promise that we trust. 
The promise that the kingdom is ours. We inherit the kingdom from the foundation of the world. The promise of life in the present now with Christ. The promise that in the least, Christ is present for us to serve. So empowered by these promises, pay it forward. Empowered by these promises, do something for the sake of others. Empowered by the promises, feed, give drink, clothe, welcome, take care, visit. God loves you. Do your chores. It is Christ the King Sunday. The one who became human. The one of whom we say, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. The coming one will separate the sheep and the goats. And yet, that coming one is present now. It is Christ the King Sunday. Amen. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. For the fruit of all creation, the sermon hymn. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and in hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray now for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, for all people according to their needs, and for the whole of God's good creation.
Holy God, from Christ we receive our call to feed, clothe, and welcome. Direct your church to respond to this call in faithfulness and generous love. We pray for the work of the ELCA hunger and partnerships with Global Feeding Ministries. Hear us, O God. In Christ, the rock of our salvation, we are brought into union with all of creation, with mountains, seas, dry lands, and animals of the field. We seek your guidance and protection. Hear us, O God. In Christ, we know merciful judgment. Guide rulers of every nation in ways of humble leadership and wise decision-making. Allow aid to come to all who are underserved and care to any who are ne neglected. Hear us, O God. In Christ, we feel the depth of your love and care toward us. Nourish all who hunger, connect any who are isolated, and surround all who experience rejection or abuse. We pray for those who suffer, including those we name in our hearts. Hear us, O God. In Christ, we are made a people of his pasture. Inspire the outreach and social ministries of this congregation. We pray for all people who serve and attend to the needs of others. Hear us, O God. For peace among nations and for military de-escalation, especially between Israel and Palestine, Ukraine and Russia, hear us, O God. For safe return of hostages and for attentiveness to humanitarian needs in Palestine and Israel, hear us, O God. For residents of Iceland and New Guinea, as volcanic activity increases, hear us, O God. For continued rescue operations following a tunnel collapse in northern India, hear us, O God. For cleanup efforts following the oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico, hear us, O God. For family and friends who gather this week, especially those with relationships that are strained, and in thanksgiving for all of your gifts, hear us, O God. Holy God, in Christ, we are welcomed home. We praise you for the faithful witness of those who have served and extended your welcome and love to us, especially those we name in this quiet moment. Unite us with them as one body of Christ. Hear us, O God. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Spirit of Jesus, let us pray, as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share a sign of God's peace with one another. This time I invite the ushers to receive the offering.
As the gifts are presented, we sing, Create in me a clean heart. God of all goodness, generations have turned to you, gathered around your table, and shared your abundant blessings. Number us among them, that as we gather these gifts from your abundance and give thanks for your rich blessings, we may feast upon your very self and care for all that you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our sovereign and servant. Amen. May the God of creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, sovereign and Savior and Spirit, be with you today and always. Amen. And we invite Sunday school youth, teachers, and helpers to step out as we sing, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. 